Okay, Here, here's a thing where people in the video games industry are kind of culturally different from most other programmers is I feel like the majority of the programming industry is in this mode where programming means I interoperate with the environment uh, to, I almost don't know how to say it because I don't live in that culture. I'm trying to say it like in a non, in a non straw man -y way, but it's like, yeah. it's like programming is about uh, interfacing with the operating system and interfacing with the libraries, all the libraries I'm using and all these things. And video game people have a very different view because we grew up in a world where we had very extreme requirements yeah. and we're all competing with each other on like every pixel on the screen. And so the, the faster you could draw things and the better they looked, then you won, right? And that meant being very lean and it meant being very precise. And so um, you can't be lean and precise if you don't know your underlying substrate that you're running on. Mm -hmm. um, like you can't just be like, well, on this operating system, I'm going to interface this way. And on this one, I'm going to interface that way. And I don't know what these interface libraries I'm doing. I'm using do. I just sort of use them. That doesn't work for us. And so our culture is to isolate ourselves from the underlying system to the greatest degree possible and to only interface begrudgingly and minimalistically and provide our own functionality for most things that we need. And so, for example, if you want to draw text on the screen, a video game person, we've got our text drawing code, whether that's a, a library that we're using or whether we wrote it ourselves, both things happen. Um, it's something that we provide. It's not something we get from the OS, right? Uh, the font data, something that we, because we want to draw the same font everywhere. Like we don't want to mm. query the font from the operating system and get something slightly different here versus there. And then it's like three pixels off and it doesn't like wrap correctly, right. which is things you see all the time in like regular software, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, like, like if you want robustness, there's just certain things that you should do that most culture, most programming culture thinks a different way than that. Mm. Yeah. It, it, it's almost like the rest of the programming industry has been living with a mountain of excess wealth in terms of the, the, the hardware they're running on is so much more capable than they need. And no wonder they've become um, that it's, if, if you gave a million pounds to a 12 year old, and then expected them to become financially frugal. It wouldn't happen. You, you know, there's the... Yeah, but so this is true what you're saying, but then also a lot of this complexity that we're dealing with is born from decisions that were made back when computers were much more resource scarce that hmm. no longer makes sense, but people still use those arguments, right? So I just talked about like, hey, pack your own font data in your program so that you can render font consistently. Right. People would say, oh, but we'll have a million copies of that font. You can't be and sending like, a font over the website, over the web every time you load a web page. Surely that's too much data, right? <laughs> a little well, too tight font. Or, or whatever, right? Um, yeah. Th that's actually a better argument. I'm thinking more of like native programs. Um, oh, yeah. But, you know, you can cache that or whatever. Um, but, uh, you know, so programs work better when they know what functions they're calling, right? And so there's this whole culture, again, the thing necessitating Docker and all of that is people decided, well, you don't really need to know what functions you're calling, just kind of, and then we'll swap out the dynamic libraries behind your back and it'll be fine. And it's totally not fine, right? And it's very <laughs> difficult to ship robust software in that kind of scenario. Mm. Um, again, we're talking about native programs here. Um, uh, and so, well, if you were to just statically link, that problem would completely, you wouldn't need containers, right? And there's two problems with that. One is there's too many people making this argument like, oh no, you'll have redundant copies of static libraries, which is actually solvable a different way, but people don't want to think about it. And the other one is we've just built these infrastructures that are more and more hostile to that because we made these decisions. So like mm. on Linux, you can't really statically link you can statically link kernel stuff but you can't statically link user stuff because they made boneheaded decisions about that and um 
I mean, you could, somebody would have to make a distro and declare that that's a legal thing, which I think a few of them have, but you then can't ship on most Linuxes. Like it's, it's a disaster. <laughs> I, I, there's, a, there's another angle that I wanted to come at this question from, which is um, thinking about information theory. So creating order actually requires energy versus if you burn something, it becomes disordered and, and things spread out. You know, if you, if you think about, yeah. say, life on Earth is, is ordered existence. You know, the, the fact that we can be alive is partly due to the fact that we have an input of energy from the sun and we turn that into order. And order is then the opposite of entropy or complexity. So what actually is difficult in the universe is making things ordered, which is the opposite of complexity. But often what we think of as innovation in technology and in software is adding new features, which is, in a sense, moving away from order. If, if, you, if you had a nice, simple um, device, say take um, iPhone 1, which was crazy simple compared to all the other existing devices at the time. Um, and I would argue it is more heroic and more a work of a genius um, to produce something with fewer features than it is to create something that's complex. And then if you watch a product through its life cycle and you see it becoming more complicated as people work on it, it there's a way of thinking about that as just entropy acting upon this system. It's becoming more complicated because everything decays in, into chaos. Yeah, well, that is true. It is happening all the time. Um, I, you know, it brings, that brings up a lot of topics for me, right? I mean, one is there's ways of writing code that are um, you know, um, less easily eroded, right? My code is less easily eroded over time as other people touch it versus more. And that's mm -hmm. not really something that I was ever taught in school meaningfully. Hmm. I don't know if anyone teaches it anywhere, you know, but there's no. some kinds of code that just, as soon as people start modifying them, they just fall apart. Right. And there's other kinds that have a very strong backbone and, and, stay right so that's that's one thing but also i mean again culturally we don't really have this idea anymore that software can be finished and mm -hmm. you know this started happening even before the web right because we just had all these bugs that everybody was dealing with and we got to patch the bugs and whatever but then as soon as the web happened this added a commercial incentive Right. So the whole software as a service thing, which mm. a lot of because programming is a growing industry, it's what a lot of newer programmers think of as software. Right. Right. Like I'm sure all the native program stuff that I just said is like seems irrelevant to like the majority of actual programmers because they <laughs> they just think of <clears throat> a program as like some JavaScript that you downloaded. Um, yeah. But <clears throat> but the but, thing but to realize th is there that, is <clears throat> very old software that's still in common use like anybody who uses the terminal is using cat and ls and oh sure like your, your web browser won't function without a tremendous amount yeah. of native things right but but the thing that i wanted to say was um hmm. we have a certain this attitude of hey man like modern software comes through a web browser and and it just it just works which is farcical because it totally doesn't but um <clears throat> That comes from two places. One is that, again, and it's, it's a mixed truth, which is nuanced and you can kind of, it therefore gives you leeway to see what you want to see. And that's dangerous, right? There mm -hmm. is legitimate convenience to somebody can type in a, a web address and suddenly they're using this interactive thing, right? Now, there are multiple ways of implementing that, and you could ask yourself what some of the other ones are, but let's just say that is, that is more convenient than we had things in the past, right? But the real thing driving all this web stuff is the business reality that like, hey, before you used to be able to download software 
and own it and not ask us permission to run it, and then we couldn't bill you monthly for it. And now we can sit between you and the things you're going to do and like charge you a toll every time you click a button. Like it's not really, it's not that bad, but essentially, right? And that's, that is the model by which all these companies for the past, you know, at least 15 years have been operating. And it's, it's essentially a land grab where it's like software used to be one thing. Now we're making it another thing where we get to sit in the middle and economists call that rent seeking, right? Um, mm -hmm. It's not completely rent seeking because there is some convenience provided. There are collaboration features provided and, and those things that are good. Um, but you could have collaboration features on a native program installed on your own machine that talks over the internet. In fact, that's what Call of Duty is or pick your, pick your own favorite video game. And, you know, people talk about how amazing it is that you can like edit fields in a document collaboratively and like, dude, in Call of Duty, 150 dudes are running around shooting at each other at <laughs> 120 frames per second. Like your right. computer can just do a lot more than you think it is. And so yeah. using that to justify what is really a business land grab is, is not a good argument, I think. I mean, it, it's easy to stand on the edge of society and shout at it for not being better. And people might say, but if you were in their shoes, you would understand the reasons that what you're suggesting is impossible. But, but making a game it is pushing basically every software requirement to its greatest extreme, right? If you're, if you're having to stress the processor and the graphics card to its maximum degree whilst doing uh yeah whilst doing all this complicated networking and it's got to run on everybody's bespoke machine and they will be scrutinizing it and giving it their full attention it is it's it, it's, it, it's the most difficult use case of programming in in most cases 